Mm-hmm. <coughs> okay. I would like to call this Waldeboro Planning Board to order Wednesday, July 8th. Uh, we have a quorum. We have myself, Jim Russo, Sarah Hotchkiss, and um, Ted Wooster. I don't know why I'm saying that. And we have uh, Max, who's a really small person in the back in the no, no. town <laughs> office. Is that you? Yeah, that was my hand. Thank you. Okay. Not the X, just drag it and who's in the, if you're, if that was your hand, who's sitting at the table? That's Johnny at the table. Oh, hi, Johnny. Okay, we have Johnny Cosno also. And we have our trustee scribe, Susan. And we have some various guests and applicants, I presume. Um, do we have any known or anticipated adjustments to the agenda? I do not have any. Okay. So we have some citizens here. Do we have any citizen comments apart from the applications that are on the docket for tonight? Not hearing any, we will move on. The next item is the minutes from the June 10th meeting. Um, did everyone get a chance to Review those. Are there any questions or comments? Is everyone comfortable voting on these minutes right now? Sure. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. Sarah, you okay? Yep, I'm fine. Okay. Or, I can't vote. Oh, well, yeah, I was there. I was sort of there. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. I, I'm ready. Okay. All right. And Ted was there as well, I believe, at the last meeting, correct? Yes. Okay. So yes. Uh, could I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? I move to approve. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say or signal aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. All opposed? That's, well, actually, we had four positive votes, so we'll, uh, oh, and Johnny, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I. Okay, great. Okay. Motion carried. Minutes approved. Who was the maker of that motion, Mr. Chair? That was Jim. Thank you. Ted seconded it, I've got. Thank I you. believe so. Yes. Okay, so, um, I have nothing under old business. So there being no objection, uh, we shall move on to new business. We have three uh, site plans for discussion and uh, tonight. Um, the first is um, the boat RV storage at 2818 Atlantic Highway this was the subject of last month we had a, a pre-review um, so um, we had quite a bit of discussion last time about it um, was it at max or do you or is uh mr moody here um, yep. to talk matt's, about this or? yep matt's over in the corner if you just want to go up to the podium okay is there yeah. yeah, they can hear. I know, but I like to hear them. Um, can you not hear them? Oh, it's not too bad, I guess. I can yeah. try and turn it up. All right. I'm this great at that. yelling, by the way, so if you need me to yell, that's Max Ball. To be heard. Okay. <laughs> is that good? Just give a quick introduction and explain the application. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, interested in uh, inserting a uh, boat uh, RV and uh, auto storage 
uh, business at the uh, 2018 Lady Highway uh, on the old container for the property. Uh, I'm currently uh, under contract to, to buy that um, and uh, seeking to uh, basically um, build uh, some buildings in three phases. Uh, the, uh, first, the, the first phase is a 60 by 120 foot uh, wood frame metal shell uh, building to, to store folks uh, and RVs and, uh, and automobiles in. And then uh, down the road, uh, three to four years, uh, constructing another building approximately that size. Then uh, maybe in 10 years, another one uh, approximately that size. Um, um, buildings. Uh, they, they will not be heated as cold storage. Um, and uh, also on the property, um, any uh, boats that, uh, or RVs or whatever that people uh, don't, uh, would like to store outside, um, that there will be some limited um, outside uh, storage uh, capabilities. Um, so, um, I was saying there is outside. <laughs> That, uh, that that's what we're that's what I'm aiming to do, I guess. I know um, late last month we went through some uh, the pre applications and some uh, questions on that. Um, and uh, I know okay, one of the things I did have a uh, soil test done, which was uh, just done uh, for, for the purchase and sale agreement to make sure. It, in the future if we wanted. Um, currently, there is no septic or well on the property, um, but down the road, um, I wanted the soil test done to um, ensure if we did if we did drill a well, um, if we had uh, a bathroom or whatever, that uh, it would pass. Um, and so um, that, 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 that was one thing I did have done. Um, and the uh, copy of the building plans, um, I sent them electronically. I've got a hard copy here also. Um, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward uh, on the building, I guess. Um, okay. And Addressing some of the questions um, that we had in the pre-application uh, last month, um, the, um, I did not have a stormwater um, management plan done um, <clears throat> for this first building, um, which I was, uh, you know, as the, as as the next phase. Um, as I developed another one, another building, um, that was the plan to have one done. Then I have spoke with uh, Governor Dorsey um, about doing one, and have um, obviously done a few um, for the town um, with, with with other clients. So um, they uh, told me, you know, what it what would need and uh, an approximate time frame on that. Uh, but that's something that. Uh, that it, 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 I still need to do even with just uh, the, this first building in the first phase. Um, so that was one thing uh, that Max and I had talked about um, doing. And uh, let's see, also the uh, impervious grounds. Um, doing some uh, measurements out there on the, on the property of the existing uh, the building uh, that's currently there is uh, 576 square, square feet, um, and currently the gravel, the gravel area um, that's been, um, that's there currently is uh, about 17,750 square feet. Um, 
the lot size is uh, five point one five acres or approximately oh, two hundred and twenty four thousand. Why does your name come up, sir? That's the lot size. Uh, the proposed building uh, is seventy two hundred square feet, um, and uh, adding gravel. Uh, gravel pads on each end to enter and exit the building would add approximately uh, 8,800 square feet of, of uh, gravel. Um, so uh, in the grand scheme of things, uh, what is currently there and what uh, this both, what building would um, create and the, and, the, and the new gravel uh, on, on each end, approximately a little over 34,000 uh, square feet of impervious uh, surface, which they when we talked to at the last three or five the percentage wise is approximately 15.3% uh, uh, of the property. Uh, and again, um, projected down the road, um, if each building was approximately the same size, you'd have about the same area for entrance and exit. So um, you would be talking about another uh, 32,000 square feet. Um, so you wouldn't quite double what you have. Should be approximately 30%, uh, maybe 29%. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, because uh, I believe 7% uh, is the threshold um, on that. So um, let's see some of the, some of the, the other issues. Uh, lighting. Um, I mentioned lighting, uh, any lighting on that, on the builders would be the downward facing on the ends or the sides. Um, the um, screening, uh, screening on the property, um, there is currently uh, from the driveway entrance to, to the east, some natural screening there of trees. Uh, there's not a whole lot uh, from, from the driveway west um and uh trying to because of the elevation differences um the route one is probably approximately 50 feet higher than the property itself um you know trying to create some screening i'm not sure if you could uh uh within the uh uh dot um what they on there if they'd allow you to do anything just inside the guide rail that's about the only way screening would um kind of work if you did it down on the property um uh, i don't know uh, if fencing or even natural vegetation i guess would have to be quite substantial in order to screen anything um so i know i talked to max that you know uh we would just leave all the natural stuff that's at that's on the roadway there now um and uh, and so um, I'm not exactly sure there. Um, what else? Um, any any ideas on screening there? I guess so. There's nothing else we can move on to the planning board. Yeah. So, comments from the planning board? Um, so let me just, I, I just have one, the, the, this, the, what you're proposing now with this building, the impervious total was what percentage? When you added all that up, it was? 15.3. Uh, okay, thanks. I have a question. Yeah. And I might have me and Max to come in here. So, so the 15 foot vegetation buffer, as it stands now, open group one, will they be able to see right in all the storage vehicles and all that? Uh, because if it's 50 feet high, I mean, I, I'm just wondering how you rectify that. How, how, do, you, how do you abide by that? The, yeah, I mean, that's. That's what, uh, well, I mean, the majority of stuff would be stored inside okay, so. the, in the buildings. I mean, that's, um, 
that, that, that's the whole. And, and a business right. that took off though. You said here in your proposal that mm -hmm. you could have some out outside storage. Equipment. Correct. Correct. So if that came to be, I'm just wondering how that how that would work. Okay. Um, uh, currently, um, the way the I'm, I'm not sure if you, I think he. I saw the thing. Though. Go ahead. The park. Yeah. Right. Well, no, that the uh, aerial map he had done uh, maxed it out and plotted out the. Uh, oh, the the yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, I Okay, so uh, currently um, under this proposal yeah. uh, of, that, of that building, any actual breakdown, any storage of anything outside would be uh, that would be if, if behind this building or, or behind this building over here. Um, currently, currently, Henderson Roof has has they store like three trailers here. Hello. Over in that building, um, and then the next proposed building is going to is proposed is going. To, I'm hoping to. Is parallel to right. it, 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 it rule one, and then any so, so any outside storage would be on the uh, okay on, uh, on the north side of that building. But and I was just wondering if you if, as you go along and say business is booming, which I hope I'm involved in this, I'm involved in a serious, I'm involved in a serious conversation elsewhere. Ted, Ted you have to mute. <laughs> so you have uh, you know six or eight ten boats. Do these boats and vehicles and RVs do they ever like leak fluids and you know oil and that type of thing? And what happens to that? You, is there a plan for that? That you know it seems like those vehicles they, they leak something. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if that's you know concern at all. Um, well, yeah, actually, um, one one of the um, a gentleman has a business such as this. A family I've, I've, sure. I've been working with. He, he, uh, he, he recommended that it's actually by uh, the oil absorbent uh, and put it under the automobiles, especially right, in right. the uh, RVs. Boats are not such a big deal. They have an outboard or the inboard, you know, they're pretty okay. sealed unit. Well, um, that's at least, you know, you've got a, got a handle. Right, okay. exactly. I, I, that's, that's one thing you mentioned. Was, um, and, I, and I noticed actually in the facility is sure. all the vehicles and RVs that. Um, Pans under it. it seems like I always see like a pan or something. I mean. Yeah, or the, the, the oil absorbent. Uh, it, right. The oil absorbent pads. Okay. Wow. But. Are there any other questions from planning board members? Or? Plan mute. Here we go. Couple of couple ahead, of questions. Uh, it, it, the application says it's want well, to change the use to vehicle storage and and vehicle service or boat storage and vehicle service. What's met, what's the service part? Uh, that would just be the that would be the storage. It's the same as it's sort of under the same category. Well, you're doing RV. It's RVs, correct? Mm -hmm. There is no specific category for RV storage, so it would fall under that same category for vehicle service, just for RVs. But I, can, so. but I can remove that category since since that's more for something the code enforcement officer would deal with, and the planning board's focus more is on the boat storage aspect. But my concern is if we approve it for vehicle service. The, the, the provisions aren't there to adequately safeguard doing any kind of service operations. So um, I think that, I, that, that's my concern. Yep. It, in the original. I think I said in my summary, and I think it said it here. Yes. If you go to the performance standards section, the third nope. page in the performance standards section, under conformity with town ordinance plans, vehicle service, in this case, storage of vehicles and RVs, allowed in route one commercial A, but requires CEO approval. 
And I believe I said in my summary as well that you would be focusing on the boat storage aspect. Well, focusing in what it's approved for is two different things. So I think um, well, as long as it's clear that what we're approving is storage. storage. Yes. Not the RV. But I think it's, it's both boat and vehicle storage, but no service. Right. Can't be a, can't be a Winx garage. It, it's, it's, right. can't have right. the oil. Right. Yeah. Those service related items, because that's a whole other type of business. So um, what's the best way to handle this, Max? I think that if we, if our, if our motion to approve was for this application for storing boats, cars, and RVs, and it's just for, and it's just reference storage is what we're. So doing. you would motion to approve on the condition that the vehicle service half of this or the RV storage half, however you want to phrase it, is approved by the code enforcement officer. Since that is the person who has the jurisdiction on this. Um, the land use ordinance says that RV or vehicle service in this case in Route 1A gets approved by the code enforcement officer. Right. But we're not approving any vehicle service. Correct. So, so you're, I saying, mean, you're but, saying the application is fine as long as it's also looked at by the code enforcement officer to approve anything regarding vehicle service. Well, that's one, maybe it's just a semantic thing, Max, but that's, that's one way to look at it. The other is we are very consistently, you know, the, the board frequently approves applications with conditions. And the, the condition here is we're not, we are only approved, we are approving storage. Boat storage. Well, but it says the proposal is storing boats, cars, and RVs. So you're suggesting it has, it's amended so that it says he's only getting approval from you for boat storage. No, I don't know why I'm, I'm saying, I don't know why we can't approve this proposal for storing boats, cars, and RVs, but if we're not approving uh, service or anything else. That's, that's not what we're approving. That's a separate issue. Okay. Because I, I don't want to make an approval that then, I mean, if, the, it, if we're making some assumption about the CEO and something else happening, I don't think we need to do that. Well, the vehicle storage falls under the vehicle service category, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Because there's no definitive category for vehicle storage. There's just vehicle service. Mm-hmm. So we can approve it under that category with the proviso that there are no no vehicle service activities planned or approved by the planning board. Correct. Yeah, that's a fair way to slice it Jim, like that. Okay. Thank goodness I didn't have the window. Now, Jim, you said you had a couple questions. I think that was your first one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the, the second one is, I'll go back to, to what I, I mentioned last month. Uh, I, I know that in your purchase and sale, Matt, that, that you've asked the current owner to clean up all of the, the trash and the, and the old roofing tiles and everything that are out in the back. Um, sometimes things happen as, as you get to closure and, and, and it doesn't always work out the way that you had planned. I, I would still like to make that a provision of this approval that that site get cleaned up, regardless of who does it. Right, I agree. Yeah, um, and, and then actually, I, like I said, I spoke with a realtor a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you know, like she said, we'll, we will make it happen one way or another. If they don't get it done, then you know we have plans to to, to get rid of the rest of it also. So one way or another, it will get cleaned up. 
I'm not sure how we, well, that, that's just one of the conditions of, of approval. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Good. That's it. That's it for me. I'm going to mute myself because the rain's beating on this window. Yeah, right. it's coming down yeah. now. Um, in case we do lose power, um, I'll try and call every member and see if we can do this, like try and get back online. But if not, we're likely going to have to just cancel the meeting because we would have lost public participation. So just keep that in mind. Yep. Thank you, Max. Um, any other questions or comments for Mr. Moody? Sarah, Ted, Johnny? I'm gonna mute for a second. Ah, robocall instantly stopped. Um, so if there are no other questions, I've only, I've only captured here um, the, the issue of the storage versus uh, service that I think Jim summarized well, and that it's contingent on uh, site cleanup from the prior roofing business. Are there any other contingencies or well, questions or comments from the planning board? Okay. Um, my hearing none for now. Are there any citizen comments uh, regarding this application? For those who do want to speak, just uh, on the bottom left of your corner, there should be a mute button and a video button. You just have to click on that. Let me try this. I see. Well, oh, hold on. I know yep. there was there's one person who's here. I don't know why they're not unmuting. Yeah, there's somebody named somebody under the name of Lynn and somebody under the name of Cindy Stevenson. Yes, and I know Lynn is wanted to talk about the meeting tonight. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, on my on my screen, it's in the upper right hand corner. Okay. okay, there we go. Lynn is now unmuted. And Lynn, if you can also just identify yourself just for the minutes. Uh, Lynn Danes. Okay. You can uh, please proceed. Do you have okay. any comments? Uh, the one question um, on how much how much land this will be taking up how many acres when we built our facility we were told you can have minimal water runoff containment if you have less than an acre so sorry Joe, please continue so I believe that this, well, Mr. Moody, you could, how, what's your total acreage? I believe it's. It's not total acreage of the property, total total acreage of how much he's going to be using. Oh, uh, okay. Well, if you're over an acre, you have to do the water, you have to do all that stormwater runoff. If you're under an acre, it's, you still have to do stormwater runoff, but it's not as, um, What's the word? DEP. No DEP permit was required. Right, 250. Under an acre, but over an acre, you have to have DEP. Right. Uh, yeah. Leave? I believe that this is times 0.16. This is, well, if I calculate this right, you said it was Mr. Moody, you said it was 16.3% of the total property, which is 5.15 acres. So the total impervious is less than an acre. It's 0. 0.8. Okay. Is that, is, that, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, of the proposed new, um, it's only uh, 
16, approximately 16,000 square feet of, of new, um, um, what's been there is, uh, is uh, approximately uh, 18, a little over 18,000, 18,200 was already there. Present location. We had to do it. Well, does that answer your question, Lynn? Is there any other? Yes, it does. That's what I wanted to know. Okay, good question. Thank you. You oh, you're most welcome. Thank you for participating. Um, anything else? Um, was uh, So I guess the Matt for, for for your in future applications, then I guess that's a trigger point you need to be aware of. You get above a certain amount of developed space, that then you will be into a um, stormwater runoff plan. Right. Okay. Yes, yeah, so in the next phase, that's I think big right. I was distracted for a good chunk of the beginning of the meeting, but did you mention anything about uh, when that would be like if you, when you would go to someone talking about stormwater, would that be soon or would that be when oh, you're the, doing the second phase? Yeah, in the second phase, which is currently three to four years. Okay. Yeah, for, for Lynn's benefit, in, just in case it's not Can clear there, your question? We, we've talked previously in the pre-review about additional things that Mr. Moody might plan. And we're, we're only approving this current plan with this single additional building and what's associated with it. And any further uh, expansion of it would have to come back before the planning board. That is correct. But just so you know, you probably do. We've lost Susan. Yeah. Um, mm. Alex, are you trying to ask a question? What's that, Max? You said something. I think Alex was trying to ask a question. Oh, okay. Alex, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, we need someone to try to keep notes while Susan is, because I would prefer to keep going if we can, um, until she gets back on. Um, I'll do my best to take some notes and if we can combine notes afterwards, um, perhaps that might work well. The meeting is also being recorded as well. So I'll do a local recording just in case. Oh yeah, great. Yep, okay. So. Um, so if there are no other questions and comments, Jim, if I could prevail upon you, you, I, I liked the way you, uh, summarized the um, approval uh, in terms of the storage relative to the service. Oh, so back. great. So if if you would be willing to um, to put together a motion and, and include the contingency of the uh, roofing site cleanup, um, that would work well. Okay. Well, do you want to just just capture the two contingencies and then move to a, a, approve based on those two contingencies, or? Sure. Okay. 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 Well, you want me to restate the contingencies? Yes. That the approval is for storage of boats, vehicles, and recreational vehicles not for the service of any of those. And Early. the second, okay. And the second contingency? Second contingency is that the, the trash piles on site that are currently the existing owner's responsibility to remove need to be removed prior to any building permit being, being issued for, for this work. 
Great. Could I have a motion to approve? I second that motion. Uh, give with the contingencies. I would second the motion with the contingencies. Okay, I need to, actually I was, I wasn't making it, but I was, that's okay. Jim? I'll, well, I'll make, I'll make the motion. Okay. Uh, I move to, to approve with those two contingencies. And then, Ted, you will second that? Yes. Great, okay. So we have a motion made and seconded. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor signify aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. You are approved, Mr. Moody. Thank you. Thank you, Later, board. And good luck with your new venture, Matt. Thank you. Okay. Next is vehicle storage, vehicle service at 944 Old Route 1. I'm Tom Squire, and uh, just purchased 944 Old Route 1. And we want to ask to be able to park our customers' cars, store, store their vehicles inside, and then trailers and some of our vehicles outside on an existing slab. Jazz, how are you? I, I did a little, uh, my own little mini site. Yep. Because I, I live up there, so yep. I drove up on my motorcycle. And that's an old chicken farm, correct? Right. What do you, how about the structural integrity of that building? Because I was looking at it, and it, I don't know, it looked a little rickety. Do you, are you going to refurbish it or buttress it? Or how are you going to, do you have any concerns about the structural integrity of that? There, yes. Before we store things on the second floor, yeah. we're going to put our dry parts on the second floor. And before we do that, we have to put pleasures mm -hmm. along the side and pull through the beam down the center of the building. And so that will happen. And currently, the, the west end of the building is pretty rotten. Yeah, and that's yeah. where we're proposing to put in a high door. Okay. And then we're going to tear it to the floor, which is sagging out and repair the rock, get rid of most of it. Okay. So that's our proposal. And I think there are the issues there. And, and while I got you here, I, I like that idea, but because it's a chicken, it was a chicken coop, and there's certainly biological issues with it, do you have any environmental concerns about working with that and, and knowing that, the, you know, the, the waste of the chicken and all that? Is that factor in anything? It has, it's not a concern to us. It seems somebody cleans it up pretty well. Okay. Upstairs is room clean, yep. and downstairs there's some debris and some dirt that's silted in from the outside walls. We're going to recreate it so that the water from the roof runs off to the drain system. Okay. And uh, but otherwise, the foundation is very solid, uh, and the floor is solid in it as well. Okay. Excellent. So I have a question regarding you, if I recall correctly from reviewing this, that the, you, there's an entrance to route one, which is, and there's a permit waiver in here because it was handled by the main DOT. Um, and you show on the map that you have a right of way uh, uh, it's actually not a right away, but it's a permitted entrance off of Route One. I may, I may have missed. I don't know. Oh, oh, so that that all that property is a single property, so you don't need a right of way. Is that what you're saying? It's thirteen, some thirteen plus acres. Yeah. Okay. So the whole, that whole entrance from Route One to the building. Is existing and stand on that property. 
Okay. Yep. So, but but so that that uh, is there an existing drivable route from Route One along that pathway to the to that to the building area, or you go, are you going to create that? It's it it, it exists. It, I wouldn't call it drivable. Okay. Uh, we just punched a hole into the entrance of it, and we need to remove a few trees that have grown. It, it is mostly brush that's grown up in the roadbed. It, an old roadbed that needs a culvert and to be cleared, and the topsoil cleared off of it, and it will be solid enough to drive again. Yeah. Okay. And and where's the the culvert? Is that where's the culvert going to be? Um, do, you, do you see on the map where the, there's a ditch that runs along the backside of the building and, and sweeps out? It's two thirds of the way across the road from the building towards Route One, I guess. There's a lighter area in the. Let me see if I can find. I don't know. Um, does everybody have the map that I drew? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's, it, there, you can see where there's an arrow that says existing old roadbed. Oh, no, that one's not okay. So we're on your map where it says R13, lot 53A. Yeah. Another three quarters of an inch up there. You, you can see a lighter area in the map, and that's a drainage. That's a okay. hole currently there in a drainage that goes across the property. Okay. Yeah. And the culvert is complete there, but it, it's it's been failing, so we'd like to repair it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so your intention is to use Route One to access these, not Old Route One. Both. Yeah. What's that? We would do both. Both. And what? What's the criteria for choosing one or the other? Uh, well, I we haven't fully explored the Route One entrance yet. I don't even know if it's quite wide enough. Whether we'd have to, how much we'll have to improve it. Currently, we we're going in and out the entrance on on Old Route One, and we'd like to be able to access it from Route One. And so, we, for future projects or or if it's easier to haul trailers in that way with vehicles, then we would prefer that. And why would you prefer Route 1 for those versus? A little more gradual entrance. So the, the entrance on old Route 1 is a little steep. <laughs> yes. They're odd. Yeah, as a cyclist, I can tell you how steep that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we just wanted our options. That's one thing we wanted to make sure that we did have an access there before we purchased the property. Okay. Yeah. And then the other part of that is if we're not having to drive through the neighbor's yard, I mean, we share a driveway in some respects, I guess. Their driveway is really narrow going by their property. And um, they currently use our property for parking and drive. And if we don't have to open that up, then it, it just it would look better visually and be preferable for us. It's easier to come in for move one. So okay. Could you speak you you mentioned a a fence, and I can see where it is on the map, but it's unclear what it's shielding from what. If you can, okay. So talk about that. Drive, say if you're driving or cycling up Old Route One, and you pass the house there on the right. There's an opening to the back end of the lot, not the back end of the lot, back behind the the barn, and there where this slab is. And currently, our some of our vehicles and equipment is there and you can see it from the road and we'd like to block that view from for the neighbors or from anyone on, on old route one and for our own for security so we choose who goes in and out okay yeah. 
is everybody involved thoroughly comfortable with the amount of runoff that might be using the culvert, like down into the Lupian's garden center? I don't, is that a question? I'm yes. I don't understand all that you said. Ted, can you repeat it? We had um, lights go out just a bit. <laughs> can you, uh, and then that happened. Yeah. You have a clear understanding of the runoff that would be using the culvert and its impact potentially on the, on Lupian's garden center. Oh, the culvert there and what effect it will have on Lupian's garden center. The one you mentioned, the culvert you mentioned earlier. Right. Do you know what effect it'll have on Lupian's Garden Center? I don't know where Lupian's Garden Center is, I guess. I mean, it runs off into the 13 acres of land down, and it runs down to that swamp and brook at the bottom. Then out behind the Garden Center. Well, it goes, it's got to go uphill before it gets to the Garden Center. But anyway, I, I don't, it's been that way for many years and I, all, all we want to do is improve it. I don't see that we're changing that. Oh. But I, if there's a concern, you know. So the, in other words, the culvert already exists, correct? It's just yeah. in disrepair? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. So let's see if I can find where you are on the map. It's a seasonal drainage, it looks like to us, to me. Hmm. Yes, I have a quick question. Sure. Go ahead. You're going to store, my goal is to store car parts. Mm -hmm. Is that for, uh, are you going to service the cars that park here? What, what, no. Is this a salvage thing? Or what, what is that about? That's a fair question. So I run a car repair shop in Camden, Maine. In Camden, okay. Yep. And uh, so there we do all our work and we, need, we currently store a number of cars and parts at Stetson's in Warren. Gotcha. And so we're looking for a place of our own. So that's why we've done this. And we want to be able to store hard dry parts on the second floor. Right. So we restore vintage cars. And so it's very hard to find parts. So we need a dry place to keep them. Gotcha. And so we start, we're, our intention is to stockpile the parts. That we for for antique them. cars. Yes. Okay. Does that max change anything as far as the application? Being an antique car or the yeah, parts? Yeah. Use that. Does, does that have any bearing on this? No. So the whole thing of uh, vehicle service, it's all going to fall under that the same category just because it's more of an accessory building to um, the store. And, or, okay, so it's not the main. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It all falls under the vehicle service because okay. okay. it's all going to benefit the Camden store. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. And the, a couple, the couple there, points or questions. Nope. Hold on a sec. Out. Hold on a sec. I think they're still uh, Johnny and Johnny. Yeah. You got when you, you guys had sort of had an off. You were off conversational there, and we couldn't hear you. So I'm sorry. Um, just make sure we. You want me to repeat something, Scott? Or if you if you I feel asked, it's helpful to everyone. I asked Chad just about. He says my goal is to store car parts, and I was right. We caught the first part of that. Yes. Uh, what you what that entailed uh -huh. a salvage type thing but he and uh, Taz said no it's for antique so that, that was the gist of the conversation okay um before i get to your questions jim um just to go back to what ted was saying ted were you talking about about moose crossing is that what you meant yes okay oh. so this is if you were at moose crossing and coming back towards walderboro You'd have quite a ways to go, and then Bullwinkle Steakhouse before you get to this property on Route One. I, so it's quite a ways up the hill, I think. I was just thinking about potentially massive runoff sometime, but I guess that mm -hmm. hasn't happened. The hill absorbs major volume. Yeah, and that's all trees and the brook. Yes. Brook as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good. Okay. Um, Jim. So, so Taz, first, um, I believe at the beginning you mentioned that this is a wooden barn. 
existing barn? Yes. So my question then really is for Max. Yep. Max, does the fire department have any concerns about vehicle storage in an old wooden barn? I can ask that for, uh, I can ask Chief Smelter if this is a concern. Um, when, when Taz first came to me and asked about this, I did ask Bill Maypower what his thoughts on were the thing. And he said, um, a lot of it, a lot of agricultural buildings, especially wooden ones are always reused for different things. Um, so this isn't a new unique issue, but if that would be something you would like, I can have, I can have Chief Smeltzer just take a look at this and see if you have any concerns. Chief, Chief, I'm just thinking access, if we had to get to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should something happen, especially since it's storage and not occupied, that, that might be a concern. Okay. Um, second, I'm looking at page one, Max, of the document that you produced, uh, parking and loading. Leaving it says, all, maybe it's not Max, maybe it was Taz that produced it. All parking will be at least eight feet from the closest property lines. So that was an item I wanted to make sure was addressed because in the ordinance it says that parking is not allowed within eight feet of a property line. So I'm just, that was more of just stating uh, something relating to the ordinance. Uh, I can pull up the exact spot. Just give me a second. <coughs> Uh, if you have any uh, questions, uh, you can do that while I'm looking for this. Well, I guess I guess while you while you look that up, the, again, the only way that they'd be parking within eight feet or, or or yeah, closer to the property line is if some hard pack some surfacing was done to, to prepare a, a parking area. And that in itself would require some approvals. What we're approving right now is strictly to park on the existing slab and to park in the existing barn. Correct. And I found the section, by the way. It's on page 4-9 of the land use ordinance, um, section J. All parking spaces and access drives shall have at least eight feet from any side or rear lot line, except for the additional requirements and buffer yards. So that's what I was referencing. That um, the slab and the existing barn, where most of the parking, where the parking is going to be, is at least eight feet. And I think it was measured at 18, 18, 18 feet away. With 50 the, feet for the barn and 76 feet for the slab is what I see right. in the plan. Mm -hmm. And as for the driveway, I made a mention of that. That's an existing shared driveway. So I didn't know if that had too much weight in it. That's all I had. Any other questions or comments from Max or the board or the applicant before we open it up to citizen comments, if there are any? Okay, there, are there any uh, comments? Uh, any citizens or butters here that have any comments or questions? I believe Cindy Stevenson called me earlier. Hello. Hello, and let me unmute you. Hopefully this will unmute you. <laughs> nope, uh, there should be a... There yep. you go. There we go. Here we go. So could we have... Yeah, could you please identify yourselves for the... Yes. Cindy and Andy Stevenson. Okay. And we are the property owners on the other side of the said chicken barn. The other side? You mean to the to We're, the 
to the south? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my question, um, using the access of that driveway, it is on the hill. <laughs> And I'm just concerned about trailers backing in and the speed that people go on this road can be excessive, unfortunately. So that's a concern I have. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm assuming trailers are going to take a little bit of time backing in and um, managing that driveway. And the other part I'm questioning is security, um, you know. If these are antique and nice cars, I'm assuming you're going to have some type of security for this. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Good. Uh, Mr. Moody, do you want to respond? Um, this is Taz Squire. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I think <laughs> Taz Moody left. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the trailers, tra getting trailers. Luckily, we have a good relationship with Joel, our neighbor, on the on the uh, north side. So we I can access directly and pull straight in either direction. We can pull straight in back to the slab where we unload. Mm -hmm. And um, but we've tried it multiple multiple ways, and it's not easy the driveway. That's why we want to open up a, an access point to Route One. So. And in terms of security, yes, we, we will need something, I'm sure, for insurance, if nothing else. But yeah. we want something to alert us if, if there is activity other than our own in the building. Mm -hmm. because, yeah, because they will be our customers' cars and of value. Yeah. Mm. And, and I suppose I, I do have one other point. Um, and it's just, it's going to be related to that runoff now that You've gone. You've done a very nice job in clearing that one side of the barn now, where all that brush has been built up. But so now we have that entire surface area of that barn roof on that side when it rains. That's going to be coming off on that disturbed ground, and and that's probably. I mean, we'll we'll see where all the water goes. Um, but that's going to need, I believe, some kind of treatment. I hadn't noticed anything as of yet there. No, we have not completed that. We tend to surface that with something that like crushed stone or something of that sort that catches the water but carries it away from the building into the drainage ditch which has been filled with muck for many years right so, yeah. the drainage ditch is on old one no it runs to the back of the building oh, oh okay okay so it runs off and behind the slab so uh, okay yeah, there's the area we cleared to the south side of the building runs into a, a pooling area that we've created so that it doesn't just run freely into, into the drainage ditch. Okay. We're trying to control it. But there's more to be done for sure. Okay. So, okay. So this is just right adjacent to the building. So this is in the 18 feet between your property line, the Stevenses, and the building. Okay. And then is it is it we don't really know where the line is. It's an existing ditch. And we've been we've been wanting to introduce ourselves to Cindy and and, uh, and see what their understanding of the property line is. So okay. Know where we we are exactly. there are two stakes. Oh really? There are, yeah there are stakes. Yeah. So we should get together and we'll Good. hunt yeah. them down. <laughs> so, so is your property wooded on on your yeah. property it is wooded in between where you're okay okay great yeah that can make it awful hard to find um yeah. depending on how much multi-flora you have quite a while right? yeah <laughs> so, um yeah. okay so does that does that do you have any further questions from okay great Thank you. If you do, just butt in again while we're trying to finish up. Um, so um, I'm looking through the my notes and 
I don't see anything that I captured that would amount to a contingency here. Uh, was there anything anything from the board members or Max that we should uh, include that's not already in the application that um, other than the the motion should be with the contingency of the storage um, that it's storage of vehicles and RVs and not our approval is not including any service. There's no service of vehicles. Storage of vehicles and parts for the, yep. yeah, set up, I mean, yeah. Um, I think, I don't, Jim, correct me if you're, if I'm wrong, but uh, do you want me, but do you also want to include having the fire chief take a look at the building? Hmm. You, you, you mentioned that you had once before, right? Are you talking about me? Yes. Um, I'm only going off of what Bill has said. He, and he's just, and he has said that agricultural buildings, including wooden barns, are reused all the time, not specifically for vehicle storage, but it, they are always reused for different purposes. So it's not an uncommon practice, but I do not mind uh, having just uh, melt or take a look. If this, so, if this, so I think yes, yes, I'd like to have put that in as a contingency to have the, the fire department weigh in on on primarily on access and, and if they see any any issues, they probably won't have any, but I want them to be aware. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. I think Mr. Squire, you mentioned I mean I think I think the insurance will will be the will be the key factor. Uh, once you put vehicles in there of, of your insurance coverage, they can be pretty sticky about those things. So it's certainly something that actually, if you can meet the fire chief to discuss it, if he's going to, to see it, he could probably help you understand pretty well what might be required of you for the insurance purposes as well. So it might, it might work out to, to your advantage as well. Um, if you have no concerns about us putting that in there. Um, are you okay with that? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Uh, again, that, I'm on the Lincolnville Fire Department. What's that? I'm on the Lincolnville Fire Department. And it's an important aspect. Uh, oh, cool. Okay, good. <laughs> and again, if I was a fire chief, I'd want to know how the access is and what's in the building. And, you know, mm. Okay, so I have those two uh, contingencies. Were there any other questions and comments before we have a motion on this? I'm sorry, the first one contingency was the fire chief examination. What was the second? The other that this uh, approval is for storage of vehicles and parts and does not include uh, vehicle service. Similar to the last one we, we did earlier tonight. You all set with that, Susan? Yes, thank you. Okay, so could I have a motion to to approve based on those two contingencies? I'll move to approve. I'll second it. Motion made and seconded. Any last questions or comments? Johnny and Sarah, okay? I'm fine with it. Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Who was the seconder, please? Ted. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Squire. Um, good luck. And thank you for, to the Stevensons for coming. Thank you. Be helpful. Okay. So, this hasn't been any thunder and lightning for a little bit, so might have uh, dodged it here. Kind of stuffy. Okay. So, next we have the food pantry.
Yeah, my name is uh, Jeff Brown. I've recently been promoted to be the operation manager for the food pantry. And we spent three months, I think, up here doing the food pantry out of the municipal building. And during that time, we learned a lot of lessons. <clears throat> uh, number one being that the previous food pantry, the one that we were in, was totally inadequate for doing the level of service that the town required, towns required. Uh, for one thing, it was very small, a third the size of this room, and with the food in there, there could really only be one, maybe two people working in their volunteers maintain any kind of physical distancing. And up here we noticed that they used a, an operation where they set all the bags on the tables, they filled them, they pre-bagged them, had them stored in the bays where the fire trucks are. And when people come in, they broke through. They had a pit crew that would take it out. And it was very efficient. And we would try to do the same thing. So we uh, had a chance to get a new site. It's a little smaller than up here, but it's a lot bigger than what we had. And uh, we took a chance and got it. We've been able to set it up with the uh, more ample freezer space and refrigerator space than we had before. It's at ground level. There is a garage door access to it. And it's a cement floor. And it's a lot easier to clean it. And people can work in there without being in each other's space. And there is a drive-through driveway utilizing the town right away that was up on the southern end of the property that was up and leads up to the fire tower, fire tank. This is the tower. So they can drive through there and around. We can check them in, we can get the food to them, and they go out the other driveway to the house. Doing it. When we did it up here, we were doing it every week. As uh, we're starting back now, we did it yesterday, but we won't be doing the food pantry again for two weeks. And we're going to be on a first and third Tuesday basis, unless something drastic happens. And we have signage out by the road directing people to what is the entrance, which is the exit. We have cones up to direct the traffic flow. And I think that's about all we've got. Uh, is there any questions on? Well, Jeff, first of all, I want to thank you and your staff for the fine work that you do in town. Very, well, thank you. It's very that you do a great job. Yeah, and in this time, in this time, in this situation, you know, kudos to all these. But the, again, I'm going to sound a little dumb here, but <clears throat> does the food bank, do, do, do certain people or companies, will they drop off products to give to you, and then you package it up? Or I guess, I guess, my concern is how do you maintain enough social distancing, and can you? Wipe down the products you get? Or how does that work? To be honest, I don't believe we've done the products. We, we get products from Good Shepherd right. every Tuesday that we have the food pantry. And once a month, we get federal foods that come in with a beef sure. app, they call it. And that's our, our, our big ones. But we also, each week, purchase our own food. And then we sort the food pantry, we get uh, the local farms, they, they're very generous, right? We get potatoes from a farm up north that really manage to acquire a relationship with. 
we get eggs from Bowdoin's. And I go over Monday afternoons over to Brunswick to the MCHPP, which is, I, I think it's part of the chapter, but it's a warehouse. Right. And we pick up a lot of food there. I got a van and usually fill it. Close to the Thanks. And uh, we get stuff from Anna Fritz and stuff from uh, the Main Street Grocery. And, right. But other than Bowden's bringing the eggs, uh, the potato truck drives up. And that's probably every, I don't know, maybe once a month. Gotcha. They bring quite a few potatoes up. So we can get about three. And then uh, Good Shepherd comes. And there, I couldn't do it, but they can drive right up in there and they back right up by the back door. And right. it right. seems to work pretty well. And they tried both driveways, so it doesn't seem to phase them too much. And this just kind of makes it streamline your operation a little better. Oh, absolutely. You. That would be a, a big help, I'm assuming. It is, and, and we don't have, the customers don't come in the food. Right, right. right. They stay right in their car and okay. we, we intercept them down in the parking area yeah. and find out which door they want to in. We take the food down and put it aboard. Off they go. Excellent. So if you're you're doing the you're breaking down, you're you're organizing what comes in and making up boxes to then bring down. So in the food pantry, you're doing the the sort of logistics of making up, combining these different elements of the food, right? Correct. Right. Okay. So you have the space inside there to do that. Do you have the space, the space inside there and tables? Oh, yeah, the the room itself is 30 by 30, so it's the size of this room. Okay. Yep. And we've got freezers on one side and we've got pallets around with the food on it. We've got some okay. The string of tables down the middle and Good. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Um, this is Sarah. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good. Um, I'm curious to know, is the food pantry, what is the entity? Is it a 501c3? Is it yeah. an or organization or? No, it's a 501c3. It is oh, okay. Um, and and you're using on that property. You're, you're only using the barn area. You're not using the residence. Well, there's a shed that's a cat or a carport. I should say that's attached. Right. To the and we're using that to okay. store some of our cones and that stuff. We put the cardboard out there that we we generate while we're breaking down the cartons and uh, the trash hauler comes, he probably came today, he usually comes Wednesday after we have a food pantry and picks it up. Okay. And um, is there any plans for somebody to live in that residence? So, yes. Well, I, I'm looking at. So, um, you're not going to see them in the screen, but the owners of the property are in the town office right now. I can you want to stand up or do you want me to just move the camera over to you? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll shift the camera to you. So give me one second. There they are. Hello. Oops. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Press the home button by, uh, by accident. Technology, am I right? Oh well, no, the camera's right there. there. Yep. So if you could just introduce yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, my name is Aron and Peggy Davis, and uh, we purchased the Madrama House, uh, which now houses the full pantry, uh, a couple of months ago. And um, the reason that we did that is that we have uh, only been a resident of Walter Bow for about three years. And uh, we're quite active in the Broad Bay Church, uh, which has uh, uh, 
a fairly decent uh, mission outreach. And through that mission outreach, we realized that there are a lot of needs in Walderboro that uh, really aren't being met or they need to be met or would like to be met. And uh, we thought that um, we uh, hopefully could be part of helping with those needs. Uh, not sure in what respect, but um, we knew uh, that the food pantry was um, not happy where they were. There was, it was, like Jeff had mentioned, very inadequate, about 300 square feet, and they now have close to uh, about 1,000 square feet. And uh, it, it's quite an improvement, and we're very, very happy that uh, we could offer this space to them. And uh, it really seems to be working quite well. Uh, when we purchased the property, um, the driveway was barely passable uh, with a four wheel drive that is quite high off the ground, would be fine. And there was a barely room for two parking places. And we knew if we were to do anything uh, relative to community service using the bank, that uh, we would have to improve that. And uh, that was our first priority, which we did. Uh, we spent close to $20,000 in removing uh, dead trees, trees that were touching, actually touching the structure, and a lot of dead trees that have fallen on the property. And uh, we uh, uh, spent a lot of money improving the parking. There was a lot of rubble there. There was a big pile that they uh, just piled up when they did some foundation work and uh, many, many truckloads of uh, just debris and everything that were needed to be taken away to create a decent parking spot or parking area. So at this point, we have about, uh, we've created about 3,000 square feet of parking area, which uh, equates to about 18 parking spaces. And it's good stone and uh, very adequate. The driveway is was totally redone, and uh, that's quite adequate. Um, with uh, the days that the food pantry is there, um, we do lose probably six uh, parking places uh, be, just because of the function of the food pantry. There's um, they do make a loop through there, which. Jeff mentioned, and it uh, starts up the town right away and, and circular, circulars around through the uh, property. So we lose those six spaces. We, there's a, a, a place where they stop to check in. There's a tent there that um, they, uh, they, they check in there. They move a little forward and they hold it part to them, like Jeff, Jeff had mentioned. And um, so uh, the parking place during the food pantry time uh, is adequate, uh, maybe not as uh, much as uh, would be desirable, but uh, yesterday when they had, when they uh, served yesterday, there were actually a, a couple of parking spaces that weren't even used and things they seemed to work uh, very well. And, um, so we're happy at this point that um, that the food pantry is there and that we could um, uh, provide that space for them. Um, as far as the, you're probably wondering if there's any uh, plans for the future use of the property, um, we strictly purchased it, for, uh, like I said, to um, uh, provide whatever we could help with and some of the needs of the town. And um, as far as future use, um, if you 